I'm going to begin that by saying, unlike sort of, uh, Blue Valentine or, or The Place Beyond the Pines, this is obviously adapted from a novel. I was wondering mm. uh, what that experience was like for you and if you found it to be more of a kind of pressure having to use someone else's work or conversely, was it easier knowing that the kind of story was structured already and laid out for you? Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to do an adaptation with this, fil with this film was I wanted to have a structure that was in place because, you know, structure is important, form is important for any kind of, excuse me, any kind of art. It kind of reminds me of like being a kid and like having a fence in your backyard. It's nice to have a fence because then you know where your boundaries are and you know how far you can go. And if you're a kid, no matter how big your backyard or small it is, you use every inch of that space, you know. And so to have a structure in place was just kind of freeing and able to, you know, freeing for me to be able to play within the, the confines of it, you know. And one of the things I sort of love most about this film is the fact that we sort of go on this journey with them and we feel quite torn when they sort of uh, discover this, this, this young child. Mm. We almost root for them and think, actually, maybe it's not such a bad idea. To, mm. I mean, but then later on in the movie, obviously, we then look, look at ourselves with the same kind of level of kind of disdain as they do. I mean, I'm just wondering yeah. about that kind of particular journey, if you remember going on that same journey when you read the original novel. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, all the basis of tragedy is choice, right? And people making choices that have consequence. And all of my movies, I try to make movies about people that make choices and the choices have reverberation. I mean, look, I'm, a, I'm Catholic, so I feel like everything I do in my life as a human being is like a sin. And so like every choice I make, I feel like has a consequence down the road. And uh, you know, the characters, I don't think they're good or bad. I just think they're people. You know, they're just human beings. And, you know, one of the things that, that struck me when I read the book was like I had just come off jury duty in the States. And when I was on jury duty, the fascinating thing happened that was when the prosecution was speaking, I was certain that the defendant was guilty until the defense came up and started speaking. And then I was certain he was innocent. And that's kind of the story behind all my movies. It's like these people that you can't necessarily judge them. And I think you know, that they're, they're just human and they make mistakes. And I think the mistake that Tom and Isabel make in this movie is an emotional one. I think you understand the emotion that leads them to make this choice. It's just the, the problem is that emotion usually, uh, you know, uh, can get you in difficult situations. And I was reading that you, you sort of made them live together for six weeks, or a lot of you were living together in this mm -hmm. lighthouse for a short while. I mean, I was yeah. wondering what the idea was behind that and whether there was any hesitancy on, on the actor's part when you first proposed that idea. Yeah, there was hesitancy on everyone's part uh, to shoot there, you know. First off, the studio, because they thought it was, you know, I couldn't, you know, house all the crew. And so I said, okay, I won't shoot it with as much crew. And then they said, how are you going to do that if you don't, you know, who's going to put up the green screen? And I said, well, I'll shoot it without a green screen. They said, who's going to put up the lights? I said, who's gonna, uh, we won't have lights, you know. So I just basically got rid of every aspect of the machine behind the scenes of making a movie. And I just let, tried to let it be a human thing. All we needed was camera and sound, really, and the actors. And... I, you know, I told the actors I wanted them to do that, and they resisted, you know, of course, at first. And I told Michael and Alicia both, I said, look, you guys are great actors. There's nothing I can give you that you don't already have, right? There's, there's nothing I can do to make you better because you're already great. I said, but what I can do is give you an experience. And so embrace this experience, and, and maybe we can capture some magic, you know? And coming up for you, you've got Empire of the Summer Moon, yep. I believe. Yeah, what can you tell us about that film? When does that all get started? Uh, well, I'm, I, I should be writing right now, <laughs> but I'm here talking about my past <laughs> instead of working on my future. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's an epic of the American West. It's about Quanah Parker um, and Ronald McKenzie, who were uh, kind of em em embroiled in this battle for, uh, th for the American West. Um, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's based on a book by S.C. Gwynn. It's going to be Warner Brothers is producing it. Should be shooting it next year. I'm doing my fifth draft right now. I'm trying to make it fit a movie screen because it's pretty expansive. It's pretty huge. Right. Well, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I can't wait to see it either. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for your yeah. time. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!